Big thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. Two years ago, I built a big RC catamaran tugboat that was molded out of fiberglass in 3D printed molds. Then I loaded it up with batteries, solar panels, and an RDU Pilot flight controller. It was able to autonomously tow me around to the waterways of Seattle in my inflatable kayak. In this video, I'm going to repurpose these hulls from a tugboat into a long-range drone boat platform and test out a new high-tech cellular data link that allows me to control the boat from anywhere on Earth with an internet connection. So let's get started with the modifications. If you remember back to my tugboat video, I was having some problems with water leaking through the motor shafts into the hull. Every few hours, I would have to pump them out. For our future long-range autonomous missions, leaky shafts are unacceptable because I won't be there to pump them out. Previously, I was using these flexible steel shafts that are super common in standard RC boats. Instead of using those, I decided to try out these solid steel shafts that I had custom made by PCBWay and their CNC machining services. I designed them to be a perfect fit inside of the brass tubes that I had molded into the fiberglass holes. Reality didn't quite match up with my measurements, and they ended up not being quite as tight a fit as I was hoping for. What I ended up doing was a little non-traditional, as usual. Typical boats prevent water from leaking through the shafts with what's called a stuffing box. It's basically just a compartment inside the shaft tube that's jam-packed full of grease and rope or o-rings that are wrapped around the shaft. It would have been really hard for me to add a proper stuffing box because my shaft tubes are baked into the holes, and it's very difficult to reach them. So what I decided to do was to make a reverse stuffing box, where the shaft has a narrower section and then I would hopefully be able to fill that void with grease. And hopefully with enough pressure, I would also be able to pump grease in between the entire shaft and the shaft tube. This wasn't my initial plan, so I had to manually grind down some indentations into the shafts on my lathe. They were pretty small indentations. I didn't want the shafts to get too thin and weak. But hopefully it will still be enough space for the grease. To make a grease nipple, I ground down these little bronze spacers from the snowcat tracks and drilled a hole in the shaft tube, right above my reverse stuffing box indentation. I then soldered them on, which was not easy due to their location, but got it done. I wasn't super confident this would work, and I wanted a little extra protection, so I hopped onto Onshape, which is my CAD program of choice, and designed a simple shaft seal. I then made the inverse of it, which can be used as a mold. It's actually really easy to mold parts out of two-part silicone using 3D printed molds. Okay, maybe not that easy. My molds ended up being too leaky, but I got around that by just wrapping them in tape. Once the silicone cured, I heated up the PLA with a heat gun and cut it away, leaving us with these nice little flashlights, I mean shaft seals. I designed these seals to tightly hug the shaft tube and allow the greasy shaft to rotate through it on the other side. I used a syringe to inject grease into my reverse stuffing box. I wasn't able to inject very much in there. Ideally, I should have used a real grease nipple and grease gun to pump it in at high pressure, but that would have been really difficult to install way down in the holes. Version 1 of the shaft seal ended up failing because it was too flexible and had too much grip on the shafts. This would cause it to twist and eventually pull the shaft coupler out. I then made another version that had a shorter section touching the shaft. This seemed to work a bit better, so I decided to try it out on the lake. To install the prop, I had to grind a flat into the shaft for the set screw of this keyed collar. Then the prop goes on, and then another collar, and with that, we're ready to rip. So I took it out to the lake for the first time since the Great Seattle Tugboat Kayak Tour. For a while, it was working great, but then the shaft seal started sticking to the shaft and twisting up again. Uh-oh, what is that sound? This wouldn't have been as much of an issue if I just didn't use a shaft coupler that wouldn't pull apart, but these ones should be fine if the seals are not acting up, or if I don't give it too much power in reverse. Nothing seemed to be leaking though, so that's good. For a more strenuous test, I added some rocks to displace more water so that the shafts would experience higher pressure. I just had to keep the throttle low to prevent the seals from twisting. Oh, ouch, hit a submerged rock and it knocked my rock off. The next day I made some girthier seals so that they would hopefully have more resistance to twisting. Testing out the new seals today and I'm running a waypoint mission in auto mode. It's working great. It's perfectly dry inside. Love to see it. So it seems like our leaky shaft issues have been solved. The next issue I wanted to take care of was lake weeds getting caught in the propellers. This didn't end up being too big of a problem during my voyage, but the props definitely did pick up some seaweed, and I would have to reach under the boat and pull it off. The HMS Banana Slug had much bigger problems with lake weeds getting stuck on the props, and that was even with these intricate 3D printed prop guards. To protect against this, I wanted to make prop protector plates that would deflect weeds away from the propeller. 
To get the shape of the hull, I made a foam template, and then traced that onto some composite plate and cut it out with a Dremel. For a proper bond, I sanded off all the paint down to the bare fiberglass underneath. To tack the fins in place, I used some CA glue with kicker to make it cure instantly. Here's both the mid fins on there. Looks pretty good. Here's the lower fin being cut out on my Stepcraft M1000 CNC router. That one was made with thinner fiberglass plate. That one got tacked in place with some CA as well. To form a permanent bond, I mixed up a bunch of epoxy-based fairing compound. This is basically just thickened epoxy that doesn't sag at all when you put it on a steep surface. Very good for making fillets. And that's exactly what I did. Made some nice fillets on all the sharp corners, top and bottom, both plates. Before attaching these plates to the hulls, I also sharpened the edges for extra hydrodynamic efficiency. After the fairing compound cured, I did quite a bit of sanding to smooth out any lumpy bits, and then gave the area a few squirts of paint to finish it up. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Hopefully it does a good job at deflecting weeds away from the propeller. Next it was time to start on the electronics and the things that hold them. So I hopped back into Onshape and started modeling. This is my folding mast mount. I needed to be able to fold down the masts so that my boat can fit in the back of my truck. There's a little detent here so that it snaps into place in the vertical position. This is the big one here. It's a pan mount that allows for 360 degree rotation of the network camera that I can use to monitor the boat in real time, and a GoPro to record in HD. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD program that makes collaborating and sharing files super easy, so if you want to access any of these parts, just check the Onshape link in the description, and you'll be able to download the parts or edit the source files or whatever you want. It's pretty awesome. Next up, I printed all the parts. Here's the main gear printing on the FlashForge Guider 3 Plus. This here is the base part that the gear sits inside. I lubed it up with some lithium grease and slid them together. Spins very well considering that there's no bearing. This is the servo I'm using. It's a sailboat winch servo. These are actually pretty cool because it has position feedback for five full rotations. And my gear ratio here is five to one, which means my camera will have a full 360 degrees of motion while still having plenty of torque. That got screwed into the base, and then the pinion just pops on there and screws onto the spline. Works like a charm. This is the camera platform that's sole purpose is just to get the camera higher up off the big gear so that it's not in the shot. I just glued that in place. I'm using this network camera for the live video stream. It's way heavier than I would prefer it to be. I took it apart hoping I could just pull out a little board camera, but there were several PCBs in there, so I decided to just keep it intact. Another feature of my pan mount is that the wires can pass through the center of rotation to keep them from getting twisted up or caught in the gears. Here's the camera getting attached to the mount. Here's the mast mount all printed and assembled. I'm using sticks as masts, so I glued those in. Then the other side of the stick went into the top part. Here's the star of the show today. It's the l -Sight Halo. This is a beyond visual line of sight drone control link that can send both video and Mavlink back to me over 5G cellular networks. I say networks, plural, because it can use up to four SIM cards, all from different carriers, and it automatically hops to the best one. Pretty slick, huh? Here I'm screwing it into the mast mount that also goes on a stick. The folding mast mounts screw onto the boat's deck, and then the masts go into those. The halo connects to the network camera via an ethernet cable, and it connects to the RD Pilot flight controller via a USB cable, so there's a bit of cable management to be done here. I made some hazard lights with NeoPixel LEDs and an Arduino, but then I realized the best way to keep old salty fishermen away might not be flashing orange, but instead rainbows, so I made them be that instead. Those got attached up on the mast for maximal visibility. I wanted a way to know if my boat was sinking, so I got these liquid level sensors and attached them to an Arduino along with some NeoPixel LEDs. The LEDs change color based on the water depth that the sensor reads. The sensors were glued into the holes near the prop shaft, and the LEDs were placed in view of the network camera so I could see them during the mission. For close range control, I'm using this Express LRS diversity receiver. That connects to the flight controller via UART and the CRSF protocol. Apart from just the RC signal, it also sends telemetry data back down to my RadioMaster TX16S here. Pretty slick. In order to give this boat a fighting chance at not ending up at the bottom of the lake, I filled the cavities of the hull with scrap foam for backup buoyancy. After that, I put the lids on to keep splashes of water out, lowered the masts for transportation, and with that, it was ready for the first tests with the fancy new data link. So I headed back to the lake and put the boat in the water. But first, a word about factor. Because the only thing that gets me more excited than waypoint missions is ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to my door. That's right, when you sign up for Factor, you'll eat well while saving so much time by not having to do meal prep that you'll be able to tackle everything on your to-do list. 
skip the trips to the grocery store altogether. With Factor, your meals show up fresh, never frozen. Just pop them in the microwave, and boom, two minutes later, you'll have a delicious, dietitian approved meal ready to eat. When I say delicious, I'm not kidding. Factor is so good that my roommates just couldn't resist and ordered their own. Ethan here even balled out and got their prime rib. Mmm, wow, that's good. <laughs> Check out this jalapeno lime cheddar chicken. It was so good, I couldn't even believe it came in the mail. This one is the chicken piccata, another of my all-time favorites. This turkey chili with zucchini was also the bomb. They even have vegan and vegetarian options, like this mushroom masala. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code RCTESTFLIGHT50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Now back to the video. For the first time ever, I'm connected to the boat from my phone as a hotspot to the computer and I'm getting live video and telemetry data on Mission Planner. How amazing is that? And I also have my new TS-16S here connected with Express LRS and I got the Yapu script working for RD Pilot telemetry so I can see all the telemetry from the boat on the screen there. Pretty slick. It was a pain in the ass to get set up though. Okay, so I just put the boat in auto mode. So it's doing its first waypoint mission and it should just drive itself around out in the lake for as long as I let it. Here's a little preview of the mission. Let me zoom out here. It's basically just a big rectangle and it repeats that over and over again. There it goes. Bye, little guy. <laughs> little boat, big world. Did it just tell me it reached a waypoint? That's incredible. Yeah, it did, it reached waypoint number one. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Okay, let's see if we're still doing the right thing. Yeah, it's doing it. It's doing it. I can't believe it. And we have live video. This is amazing. Okay, I'm actually going to flip it out of auto mode and bring it back. I need to write my phone number on it just in case it gets lost. And I also need to start the GoPro on there recording. Okay, the GoPro on there is now recording. I'm going to give it a little throttle, steering mode. And let's go back to the planner page. Still got video, still got everything working. So I'm going to put it in auto mode now. The mode switched to auto, as we can see there, and the boat is turning back towards its waypoint. That's excellent. Bye, little guy. I might turn down the maximum waypoint speed a little bit, because it's kind of going faster than I would like. I want to go real slow and save battery. Waypoint speed. I'm going to go 0 0.6 meters per second. Right parameters. Oh my god, I'm changing parameters over cellular. This is amazing. Hopefully everything works. <laughs> Ooh, we're going for it. So yeah, we got a long ways to go. So I'm gonna, oh my God, we have so far to go. Holy crap. I'm gonna pack up and go somewhere with Wi-Fi so I can monitor it. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, I got some duck friends that showed up. Hi ducks. Hi ducks, hi ducks, hi ducks, hi ducks. Okay, good luck out there. I'm gonna pack it up. Oh my God, it connected. Oh, this is so exciting. Where is it? Where's the boat? Where's the boat? Where's the boat? Where's the boat? Oh, it's still going. Oh, it's so great. It's saying fail safe because I disconnected the RC receiver or the RC radio. So it's in fail safe, but it's still doing the waypoint mission. Let's get the video working now. Video set tree streamer source. Okay. So now the video should show up in a sec. Until then, I will go and read the waypoints. Let's see if it does that. Wow, I did it. Oh my god, I can't believe it. And there's the video. Amazing. This is so amazing. Swap with map. Oh my god, I can't believe this is working. That's so fun. Hasn't even gotten to the larger part of the rectangle yet. It's still going outwards. Wow, that's incredible. There's totally just a boat that drove by me. <laughs> I wonder if they saw it. I wonder what they thought. Now I'm going to get hit by the wake. Oh god. Okay, so I just connected the TX-16S here. The computer thinks it's basically just like a USB joystick. Oh my god, look, there's another boat. Okay, but what this means is that I should now have hand control of, this, of the camera via this uh, knob on the... Oh my god, look at that, I do. I have hand control, that's awesome. Oh god, here comes the wake from the boat. Oh, there it is. Are we gonna get swamped? The LEDs on my flood indicator are still green, so that means that there's no water in the boat, which is good. Okay, I think that was the wake. That wasn't so bad. I'm gonna keep panning the camera here. 
see what there is to see. Oh, this is so cool. Wow, here's more weight coming through. Ah, I'm just sitting here at Starbucks nonchalantly doing my waypoint mission, making sure my boat's not going to flip over from wake. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Swap with the map. Let's see where I'm at. Let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I got a long ways to go. How's my battery doing? We're at 12.95 volts. That's <clears throat> still pretty good. I could probably have enough battery to do that whole mission. These are old batteries though. These are the same batteries that pulled me around in my kayak when I had this boat towing me around Lake Union. That was like two years ago. Here's a latency test. You can see how long it takes for the camera to pan once I move the knob. It's not terrible. I mean, it wouldn't be great for like a fixed wing airplane, but for a boat, it's totally usable. Oh, we got a bogey. Let's see if they come check out the boat. There's not a lot of boats out here this morning. Just a few. But that one looks pretty big. It looks like we have perfect weather conditions for this. The lake looks super flat, although there's supposed to be four mile an hour wind coming from the southeast, which is supposed to be that way. Let's do a quick surroundings check, see if there's any anybody spying on us. Nope. Coast is clear. Look the other way, nothing sweet. I think I'm having some compass issues considering that the boat thinks it's pointing that way, but it's clearly going straight down this line right here. I guess I need to recalibrate my compass. I forgot to recalibrate it after moving it. That's a fatal flaw here. It still works perfectly though, it seems. These lithium iron phosphate batteries are interesting because they have a really like flat discharge curve that flattens out before it drops off quickly. I've been at 12.91 or 92 volts for a long time now. And if we look at the uh, discharge curve for this battery, um, so basically what this says is I need to be done with my mission around 12 volts. So the voltage doesn't move very much before it just drops off, so I'll have to be careful. But so far I'm about halfway done with the mission here, so I think we'll make it. My current meter isn't working, and I'm not sure why, but I should really get that working, because that would tell me how many milliamp hours I've consumed. That would give me a really good idea of how much I have left in the batteries. I need to go troubleshoot that when I get home. Wow, I cannot believe how glassy it is out there right now. I can see my own wake. That's pretty good, considering how slow it's going. <laughs> Have a look around here. I don't see any other boats. I can't believe those boats that drove by earlier didn't go check it out. I would be so curious if I thought, saw this thing out there. We're like two thirds of the way done with the mission now and the battery is still at 12.9 volts. That goes to show how difficult it is to judge how much you have left with these lithium iron phosphate batteries because the voltage doesn't move much. So once I round this corner and start making my way back up here, then I'll leave the coffee shop and drive back to the beach to go intercept it when it gets there. Whoa, that was crazy. I just got hit by a huge wake. The boat just kept on going. That's interesting. <laughs> Weird. Okay, we're about to hit this turn at waypoint number nine. Coming up on it quick. Oh, there it goes. We're turning. Beautifully executed turn. 10 out of 10. Although it still thinks it's facing that way when it's actually facing that way. Not so good. It's amazing that it still works as well as it does. Let's go get this boat. It's only a six or seven minute drive from the coffee shop to the beach, but it's still a little nerve wracking to leave the boat unmonitored for a little while. Oh, I think I see it. Yep, there it is going along. It seems like it's getting closer. It's still really far away though. Zoom out. Oop. Wow, we so beautiful. I can't get over how nice of a day it is. Uh oh, we got a bogey. It's okay. I don't think their course will intersect. I'm still really far offshore. Holy crap, that's a lot of dogs. Jesus. <laughs> I just connected with cellular and all appears to be well. It's still so far out that I cannot see it with my naked eyes, but I can see it through the camera with a zoom lens. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And we're still at 12.9 volts. That's hilarious. So we're almost to that waypoint, and then it's going to start making its way back up here. I'm going to do a little test here. I'm going to turn on the uh, radio and see if I get signal from the boat when it's way over there. Don't appear to have signal right now. Hold it up for a little while longer. Maybe if I move the antenna into a different orientation. Oh, 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 I think it has signal. I don't see failsafe on the screen there anymore. Let's see if I can move the camera mount. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. I have RC signal. It says no telemetry data though. Amazing. Well, I'm going to turn this back off since I don't need it. We got another bogey. 
There I am. Holy crap. They're on a collision course. Oh god, no they're not. Let's see if we can see it on the mount. Uh, boat, boat, boat. I don't see a boat. Oh, there they are. I can see them just barely. Right there. See that? Probably not. They're pretty far away still. So this thing is actually programmed to just redo this waypoint mission over and over again. So what I'm going to do is make a new waypoint mission that just drives it right back to me right now. And then upload that. Okay, so we go to plan. Delete. Delete, 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 delete. So I want to make one, just one waypoint. It's going to be right there. So right. I'm going to upload those waypoints. So I'm going to go from auto mode to steering mode, then back into auto mode. And now the boat should turn. Yep, it's turning towards that new waypoint that I just made. There we go. We're coming home, baby. Huh. Where'd it go? There it is. It's coming straight at me. Coming in hot. Or not. <laughs> pretty slow but we got another bogey a canoeer oh no we should actually go say hi to that guy i'm gonna do that i'm gonna flip into manual mode here actually steering mode ah oh, i can see him but he's going pretty fast <laughs> okay i'm at full throttle let's see how fast i end up going uh, i'm at 1.3 meters per second yeah it's pretty slow go little boat go now my voltage finally dropped. Now that I went to full throttle, we got a little bit more current sag, or voltage sag, rather. Huh. I think when I get the uh, Express LRS too close to the cellular stuff going on with my phone, it kind of makes the video lag a little bit more. What up, dude? Hi. And I'm gonna turn back towards me. I need to figure out this compass situation. Adorable. Watch this. I'm gonna do the camera mount. Dude. So I just did a large vehicle mag cal, and now the heading seems much more accurate. Um, it's pointing in the right direction on Mission Planner. Maybe plus or minus like 10 degrees. It's not super accurate still, but it should work just fine. So now we're ready for the next mission. I just need to put my satellite tracker in the thing so I can find it when someone steals it. And then we'll be good to go. I think, I'll, I think I'm going to put some more batteries in it too. Incredible. Three hours and 57 minutes. <laughs> and that GoPro lens is all dirty. <laughs> Oops, I should have cleaned it out beforehand. The liquid level indicator in this hole indicates that there's a little bit of water in there. This one's dry though. It'll be interesting to look inside and see what's going on. Whoa, wowee, what is this thing? Let's see what we got. Oh my god. Wowee. Whoa, this must be the battery right here. Does this lift out or what? Let's see what kind of battery. Man, I can use this battery on my boat. Oh, that's so heavy. Holy crap, that's a big chonker. <laughs> that is a serious chonker. Okay, here's the business end of things. Whoa, I want to see the motor. It looks like it's a submerged motor. There must just be a big jet drive back in here. The impeller is like you can't see through it. It's it's super wide. It's a wide boy. See that in there? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's like a sea dupe propeller. Now I have a new retrieval vehicle for when my boat stops working. I can go get it with this thing. There's all these little molding artifacts. That can't be very good for hydrodynamics. Cyclemate. Apparently they're doing a Kickstarter for this thing right now. So I'm excited to try this out. Okay, back to this thing. Huh, yeah, there is just a tiny, tiny bit of water down there. Nothing too concerning though. It does look like quite a bit of grease is oozing out of this silicone piece right there. I'll have to put some more grease back in that. So this was just the first preliminary test of the drone control system. The boat went around 5.8 miles in total. In the next video of this project, I'll be attempting a much longer mission. I'd like to try and break my previous record of 30 miles. I did that with the HMS Banana Slug out at Banks Lake two years ago. Maybe I'll do the next mission out on the Puget Sound. Not entirely sure yet. It just needs to be somewhere with cellular coverage. I'll probably need to find someone with a boat out there as a backup if I do that. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.